And so for this, you know, if there is a laceration of the eyelid and you want to oppose it perfectly, you would do the figure of eight suture. Another indication would be if there's an eyelid margin tumor. And you may know that in our dogs, it's really common to get these benign meibomian gland adenomas that arise right at the lid margin. And so we'll pretend that there's a mass kind of right here um, along the lower eyelid. And I want to remove it, and I'm going to remove it by doing a little wedge resection. Often the first thing that I'll do is I'm going to um, just make a, a little bit of a cut through the eyelid margin with a scalpel blade on either end of the mass. And so I'm making kind of this vertical cut on either side, kind of through the lid margin. Next, I'll take my um, scissors to kind of finish that wedge. And so I'll have my anatomy scissors here, and I'm gonna kind of connect these two incisions so that I have this little triangular wedge. You can also do a more of like a pentagon-shaped incision or a house incision. Um, and remember, you can't really take out more than a third of the length of the eyelid. So now I've removed this wedge, and I want to reoppose my eyelid margin as perfectly as possible. And this is definitely a point where you want to have really good magnification so that you can identify those um, meibomian gland openings, which are going to really help you in terms of your landmarks. So do as I say, not as I do, because I don't have any magnification right now. And this is where we start with our figure of eight. I am left-handed, so this might be a little confusing because I'm gonna start on the left side of the incision. If you're right-handed, you'll probably wanna start on the right side of the incision. And we have lots of right-handed surgeons that will be walking around in a second to assist you as well. So I have my wedge and I want first to make my figure of eight suture at the lid margin. So I'm gonna start just a few millimeters from the eyelid margin and take a bite from the skin into the defect, just like I was gonna be doing a, um, say, simple interrupted. And again, I'm only gonna make my bite, you know, half thickness through that eyelid. The next thing I'm gonna do is come a little bit more obliquely now, and I'm going to um, enter the cut edge on the other side of the defect, and I'm going to come out of the meibomian gland openings, maybe just one or two from the edge. So this is kind of an oblique bite. So notice how I'm going across that defect, kind of at an oblique angle, first through the skin, out the defect, now into the defect and out of the meibomian gland openings. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, but in the reverse order. And I want to mirror this as best as possible. Um, so the more symmetrical you are, the better it's going to be. So I'm gonna start here at the eyelid margin across the defect, enter the meibomian gland opening and come out of the cut end. And this is a little bit of a desiccated um, eyelid margin, so I'm using a little bit more force than I normally would in healthy live tissue. This actually feels like a piece of jerky, <laughs> so I apologize for that. You might maybe need some like saline or something just to rehydrate this tissue here. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is go um, into that um, edge of the defect on the opposite side and come out of the skin. So I'm just mirroring everything I did um, on the first round. Okay. So my suture is now kind of in the shape of an eight. So you can see how it's kind of crossing over like that. And if I just kind of gently pull on both sides, it should nicely come together. So we have the edge of our eyelids coming together and there's no defect or step in that. And that's because I tried to stay as symmetrical as possible um, with my bites on either end. So I can now go ahead and close this. Like I normally would, say four throws. And I can either cut these tags really short or I can keep them long and then finish um, by closing the remaining part of my defect 
with simple interrupted sutures um, below the eyelid. So I would probably only need about one or two below this suture of simple interrupted. Uh, once I place those, I could actually incorporate these tags into the knots so that they're pointed away from the eyelid margin if you keep them long. So you have a couple options to play around with. And again, we'll be walking around and helping you and um, kind of walking you through these options.